Coming up on this episode, I'm gonna show you how I made this industrial farmhouse sliding mirrored barn door. So let's get started. Have you ever had Diet Coke with cream in it? If you haven't, try it out. You're welcome. Anyways, I just pulled up at Home Depot. We're gonna go in and get some supplies for our project today. I'm really excited to build this. It's gonna be a little different twist on the normal barn doors that you see out there. It's, and you could take it two different ways. I'm gonna take mine a little bit more French country, but there's definitely a way to take this kind of more of like an industrial vibe. Stick with me and we are gonna build a barn door. for a sheet of plywood, yikes. Oh, the horror of these prices. Oh, we're gonna proceed, but save every cutoff. I just went ahead and had Home Depot cut the wood for me because I'm all about working smarter, not hard. Okay, we are going to start building our door. The dimensions are for my doors, 29 and 1 8 inch wide and 81 inches tall. And I'm hoping that I did the measurements correctly. So there's a more attractive side and then usually like a less attractive side on all pieces of plywood. And we are gonna cover up the less attractive side with all of our trim and mirrors and all of that so that the attractive side can be seen from the bathroom side. So the industrial mirrors are such the rage right now on TikTok and YouTube and all of those. And I would really love to build one of those massive industrial mirrors, but I don't really have a spot for it. So this is like my little compromise and I'm gonna do like my take on it. We are going to be building a grid and just so when I'm referring to things, you know what they're called. The ones that run kind of vertical up and down are called styles and the ones that run kind of horizontal, they're called rails. So we're gonna just start making some cuts and I'm gonna lay it out prior to ever gluing or nailing anything down. So I kind of like just kind of eyeballed it here. We are gonna be using some one by threes for the styles and then a one by four for the top and the bottom. And then I'm not exactly sure what this is called, but it's three quarter inch wide by a half an inch. And we're gonna be using that for kind of the grid. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is this is how I'm gonna cheat it. You could measure it if you wanted, or you can do what I'm doing. And I'm going to make sure it's lined up here. And now we're on the other end. We're gonna take our pencil and make a mark. So using a saw is super easy to do. These are gonna be all straight cuts. The first thing we're gonna do is protect our eyes. You can put in earplugs and a face mask. Protect yourself to the level you feel comfortable, but make sure you can still move. We are gonna make this cut on the end here. And in order to make the cut, you pull it, this button with your thumb, mine's yellow, and then you grab the handle with your hand. You pull on the trigger and that's how you turn it on and make the cut. We need to line this up and pull it down before we cut and that is lined up good and we're gonna just cut. Now we can use this bigger piece to cut the other style on the other side and this will be our template. Make sure everything's lined up and we are gonna get the measurement in between here. It looks like 24 and 3 eighths. So let's see how we did. start working on the grid pattern. We just need to take the measurement from the top to bottom rails and then we'll make that cut. And then I'm gonna pull out the mirrors that I picked up at a recent Ikea trip. If you don't have an Ikea, don't worry. I'm gonna also link some that are the exact same price from Amazon in my description box below. So we're gonna make this cut, then we're gonna pull out the mirrors. What are you doing, Dolly? Ooh, isn't she so cute? Yes. 
So we are going to set these mirrors into place. We're gonna make sure that it's even on each side. That looks like spot on 12 inches, but I have a feeling it's not. So let's go over here. I think what we're gonna be doing is like 11 and 7 eighths. Once we get the dimensions, they should be the same all the way down. For this next part, once you get one measurement, you can use that as a pattern for all of the other cuts, which will make quick work of it. I've been thinking of you for two weeks straight. Then prior to actually attaching it permanently, I do a dry fit to just make sure everything's gonna work. And it does. Everything comes back in the blink of an eye. It's like your mind. You're still mine. Okay, so before we remove everything, I'm gonna take out these rails, these shorter ones and kind of mark where they go, just because I'm gonna try to not have the mirrors down when we are painting and all of that. So I kind of want to make sure that we get things lined up again. Okay, you could totally use an electric kneller for this, but I'm gonna be using mine with an air compressor because that's what I have. And this is an 18 gauge Brad kneller, and we're gonna pull that back, slip that on, and there we go. Okay, we are gonna plug this in and it's gonna fill up with air and it is gonna freak Dolly right out. I think the nail gun was a little bit much for Dolly, so we're leaving her inside. Now all we're gonna do is we are gonna glue all of the wood pieces down and then put some finish nails in them and so we're just gonna go to town. made a pretty big boo-boo and I feel kind of dumb. Um, hopefully I'll be able to fix it, but what happened is I measured these nails to the outside and they were perfect, but I didn't even think about the fact that this is much thinner than the outside. And so all of the nails that we just put in are poking through. I don't know if I'm gonna like just clip those off or hammer them out or what I'm gonna do, but for the rest of them, I do have shorter nails. So our beautiful pristine back is now gonna need some putty and I'm super not happy about that. See, I mess up still too. <laughs> it's not flawless. I nailed it back out, so now it's kind of flush. We're kind of gonna go with a rustic look anyways, and we're gonna be doing whitewash finish over the top of our stains, so I'm hoping that you won't even notice. Let's just get staining this, and I'm gonna be using special walnut. So I was seriously not liking the stain, but then I did a second coat and now I'm gonna put kind of like a whitewash glaze over the top of it. It's just part clear wax by Waverly and then a portion of plaster colored chalk paint and we're just gonna wipe it on there, kind of dry brush it on in some areas until we're just kind of happy with the look. Let's try this out. <laughs> and you'll notice I'm not doing where the mirrors are gonna sit for obvious reasons. I'm just gonna kind of dry brush it on a little bit it is a wax, so it's already gonna be kind of loose. And this will kind of give it like a grayed out, weathered look. Use a rag to kind of blend it in a little bit. Pretty 
cool, huh? I am really happy with the finish. Now we're gonna just go ahead and apply our mirror and I'm gonna be attaching it with some liquid nails. Okay, so this has been a really tight fit. So this is the last one and we've got a lot of cleanup. <laughs> I've got a lot of construction adhesive, a lot of places. That's it, and we'll let this dry, but first we are gonna clean up the mess. <laughs> In order for our door to be very sturdy, we definitely need it to be hung into some studs. Okay, so here's the deal. I really wanted to avoid putting a wood strip across my door, but when I lined up where all the holes need to go, it wasn't gonna hit a single stud. And in order for it to be sturdy, we need to get it in some studs. So the solution for that is taking a wood strip, installing it above the door jam. Hopefully it doesn't lift it up too much. I'm gonna set it right over the top of it. First, we're gonna go outside. We're gonna cut it to the length that we want, and then we are going to paint it out in the matching trim color. We are going to drill some holes into the top of our door, and this is for some mounting anchors that go into the wood that have some nice teeth on it, and this will be able to support the weight of the door. And then once we have those in, we're going to attach our rollers, and we're gonna just screw those into place. Now I wanted to add a door handle and I found this one at Home Depot and it was about $12. And since there was not a lot of kind of oiled bronze in the bedroom, we are really trying to go for light and bright. And most of the metals in the room are kind of a nickel finish. So I take it outside and I sprayed it in the satin nickel finish and it's gonna match all of the hardware so much better. I'm just gonna screw this right on and it fit perfectly. This part ended up being a little bit longer and more complicated than I expected, but once the paint was on our one by two and it was dry, I pre-drilled holes that lined up with at least four studs. I also pre-drilled holes for the hardware, which actually ended up being the wrong holes, but I fixed this in just a second, so hang with me. So after I drilled the wood into the studs, I pre-drilled the correct holes in the proper place for the round base plates, and then I screwed them onto the board. Prior to attaching the pole, I add the door stops on either side of the pole. And then I screw the hex screws from the poles to the previously attached base plates. And this may take a little bit of finesse and time because everything needs to line up perfectly to ensure a sturdy and proper fit. remove the existing door and hinges. I'm going to leave the trim work alone for now to allow for the option of a regular door in the future. Hanging the door is super simple. All you need to do is just lift it up, set the wheels on the top of the bar, and that's it. Now, there is hardware for the bottom of the door to kind of keep it on track, but I decided not to use it because I didn't want to put holes in my carpet or buy a router to kind of route out the bottom of the door, and I think it's gonna be just fine. 
I absolutely love how this turned out. It matches another mirror in the room perfectly. And it has me excited to finally finish off my bedroom to the nines, which will be happening in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned for that in the very near future. But what do you think? If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right there. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.